Hi there folks, uh, let's try to make this fortified power station look a little bit more interesting and less flat. Now there is a reason why I'm not showing my face in this video and not doing the usual shenanigans as I usually start with. The main reason is I haven't had the opportunity to set up my studio at the moment because I've been quite busy with real life stuff. But uh, I am excited these days because we are getting uh, the combat patrol for world eaters. It's just around the corner. I got an email not too long ago where they talked about it and I was happy and I am looking forward to it. So world leaders are coming back with a vengeance to the channel and uh, it'll be fun to have uh, some sort of little guys running around Angron. So that's in the future. But for now, I have this old MDF power station from TT Combat, Tabletop Combat, and I want to do something interesting with it. Now, of course, you could put it together and put a lot of greeblies on it and make it look kind of nice and really interesting and fill all the gaps but i want to do something a little bit more well not maybe simple but a little bit more quick so we're going to use a lot of cheap and easy methods to get some interesting look going trying out a few things here and there to weather it and hopefully we'll get an end result that we can be proud of let's just jump straight into the actual process of this and there is a lot to do now, first things first, is to assemble the MDF uh, power plant bunker silo thingy. It goes together easily enough uh, with a bit of hobby glue. The big coil on the inside is actually quite unnecessary for me, as I will have the doors stuck shut uh, on this. I don't feel like having it too uh, difficult for me. I'm making a simple thing here. Uh, what I am afraid of, however, is that these thin decorations that are lasered into the MTF might not be visible once I start uh, painting the structure, and maybe at this point they might be superfluous, well, if it's meant to be painted. But since I will be focusing a lot on using an airbrush and many thin layers, perhaps they will still be visible. Now for the painting. All of this can be done with a rattle can primer and base coats and brushwork with thin paint and washes, but I have an airbrush and gosh darn I'm going to use it. Also, maybe those decorations and engravings that I mentioned earlier might still be a little bit more visible after all this if I use the airbrush because of all the thin paint that that uses. First, it's of course to prime it, and uh, MDF tends to soak up paint, so this is always a very important step, but getting many thin coats of a decent black primer is really important in this case, so the rest of the paint job might actually go well, otherwise the paint will just not be adhering as well as we want, or maybe seeping into the grain or something like that. Next, we start working on the first layer of the structure, and uh, that is the actual metal structure that will later be in a flaky different color, but the underneath structure is still important. So, lead belcher is a nice darkish metal and good for a base color. After we get a steely enough base color, and of course this can be done with a rattle can or brush, like I mentioned, we start working on some tones to add age to the metal. I start by adding a brownish wash straight into the remainder of the metal paint in, me, in the airbrush. Whatever brown you use is of course fine. I'm using Andalusian Earth from Green Stuff World. It's a bit shiny, but that works okay with metallic paints, uh, at least for this stage. After we get some general hues here and there with this mixture, uh, I want to add more darkness and age to the bunker. If I was using a brush, I'd thin down GW Rattling Grime and do some sponge work to get similar effects. But since the airbrush still has a bit of murky Andalusian earth lead belcher mix in it, I just pour a bit of Rattling Grime in the pot and some flow improver and start darkening it even more. Now I'm focusing on parts closest to the ground, shadowy areas, crevices and the like, adding a bit of life and age to the little house on this prairie um, battlefield. Now to prep for chipping. I have no idea how well paints are binding to this MDF, and especially how well the chipping medium I will be using will work on the paints, if they will still bind somewhat, so to err on the side of caution, I'm giving the entire thing a coat of gloss varnish to create the first of my many save points in this uh, little paint job. 
Once the varnish is dried, I apply a generous coat of chipping medium and allow that to dry. I have not used actual chipping medium before, so this is a test run. I've used a decanted hairspray, and that does work marvels, so it will be interesting to see if this holds up to the cheaper, more readily available option. Now, I mask off the minuscule bits that I don't want paint layers on, mainly between the side armor panels, and start spurting some colors on the house. I'm using Vallejo model color for this, that tan as a lighter tone, and adding some extra panace with some khaki from the same line. Even though this will be grimed up more later, and scraped and made look older and a little bit of a hue variance to it, I think it will help quite a lot to give it something a little bit extra. If you're using brush, maybe some sponge stapling might be a good idea to get some extra gradients. I have honestly no idea how rattling cans and chipping medium work together, nor do I think that wet blending or feathering are going to work well as the chipping medium reactivates, hopefully, with uh, water, moisture and abrasion. Moment of truth. I think I've done all the steps I can to help in the chipping, but as I say, first time using this medium and no clue how everything is bonding with the MDF. And uh, I'm using thin coats and all of that, but now I'm grabbing my trusty old mangled toothbrush. Yes, the toothbrush in the intro video is a hobby tool. And let's start scraping with a bit of moisture on it. Oh yes, this works. I perhaps went a little overboard in my excitement, but I want this properly old and decayed, and yes, this is perfect for that. There are a few decorations and things on the panels that I'm now going to try and give some extra color to. I'm going to be using contrast paints for this, so maybe some of that scratchy disfigurement we've added will still be visible through it. A bit of yellow here on the hazard stripes of the door, and there is no reason to be overly neat. I'm all going to the edge of the line, as this will be heavily weathered structure, and neatness will actually be taking away from that idea. Mainly, I will be using a dark brown for all the gear-related decorations here and there of which there are many, and again, not losing my mind over the neatness, but being still a bit careful not to go over any lines, especially near the skulls on the decor. And since I added color after the chipping stage, let's see if the medium is still able to reactivate. And yeah, it sure does. But now we need to do a quick save again with some more gloss varnish before the next stage. I will be trusting the process once again, and cover all my hard work and crossing fingers, mixing a bit of burnt umber oil paints with some odorless mineral spirits to make an oil wash, and then literally drenching the entire thing in it. Hoping that I can get most of it off. Again, it looks bad now, but with a few sponges and makeup utensils with a dab of mineral spirits, I start to wipe away the grime and show the undertones yet again. Now, I put quite a hefty amount of the oil wash on, and these are some flat surfaces, so I use quite a fair bit of swabs and dab it with paper towel as well to get enough off so that I am pleased and this thing is really starting to look old as everything. It looks as it was abandoned many decades ago, and is not functioning all that well anymore. Now, for the final touch of flair. Big old makeup brush and a bit of metallic steel like paint and gently brush here and there to catch some corners and to add some weathered look and distressed bits, sponging a little bit as well with the big old brush I'm using. Do not go all over the thing, but to do this in the harshest colors and maybe splotches here and there will give it a really old and nice weathered look. And I think this is enough for this structure. It will look great on the tabletop in the corner as a little extra thing, a little extra flare. And that's the main idea. It's not brown wood anymore. It looks good now. So let's take a look at how it looks. Thank you very much for joining me here today. Check out all the links in the description. There are stuff there like my Patreon. I would love to see more of you there. But now the little bunker thing is ready. Mm -hmm.